So after a decade, Windows 7 finally reaches end of life. And this means that Microsoft will no longer create any security patches for this legacy operating system. And despite their landing page stating that the free upgrade to Windows 10 has ended, all the activation mechanisms to upgrade to Windows 10 for free still work. And I outline this in other tutorial videos. In this video, we're going to look at slipstreaming all Windows 7 post service pack 1 updates to create a Windows 7 media refresh December 2019 installation ISO. So I've just installed Windows 7 on a virtual machine and this is one of the old Microsoft November 2010 installation ISOs and it's only got service pack one. So basically it's missing 10 years worth of patches. And I'm going to use this virtual machine to update the installation ISO. So first thing I'll need is VMware tools. And now that this is installed, I can just go ahead and change the power options. So I just don't want the computer to go to sleep while it's running the slipstream script. So let's just change the power settings to never and never. Okay, so on the written version of this guide, I've got all the download links to the standalone updates and you'll need to go ahead and download these one by one. And at current, all these download links work, but as Windows 7 reaches end of life, there's no guarantee that they'll work indefinitely. Okay, so I've downloaded them all already and they're on the Windows 10 desktop. So let's drag the standalone updates over to the Windows 7 desktop and we're going to create a new folder called updates. And two of the updates in this folder are missing. So we need to extract the gigabyte utility because it contains two of these standalone updates and we need to take the 64-bit ones so we'll copy them across the updates and we're going to create a new folder called IE11 and we'll copy the IE11 cab file to this no it has to be the cab file and not the, the exe the next thing we need to do is extract two Dell driver update packages the first one contains USB free drivers and the second one contains storage controller drivers. So together this will allow installation of Windows 7 on up to 6th generation Intel hardware. And we only want the 64-bit versions of these drivers. So we're going to create a folder called drivers which contains the extracted version of these drivers which we can use for slipstream. Simply copying the X's to this folder will not work. Okay, so once we've got the drivers set up, what we need to do is copy a small utility to System32. And this utility, OSCDIMG, will be used to create the final up-to-date installation ISO. Next, I'm going to install a program called Virtual Clone Drive because Windows 7 cannot natively mount ISOs. So essentially, this third party utility just allows Windows 7 to virtually mount an ISO. So let's go ahead and install it. And now we can right click the ISO file and select mount.
and we just want to open it up and copy all its contents to a new folder called Win7. Now for convenience, I've made a slipstream script and the script will only work if all the files are in the exact same location and have the exact same name. So for convenience, I've just made it copy everything to, to see. So you should have an updates, a drivers folder, an IE11 folder and a Win7 folder. And if we go to the Win7 folder and go to sources, what we want to do is check the boot.wim and install.wim. Right click them, select properties and check that read only is not ticked. If it is ticked, then the script will fail. So if it is ticked, then just untick it and then select apply. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is install Notepad++. And with this, we can simply copy the script from the written instructions and what we want to do now is just save it to desktop and end in the extension .bat. And now because I'm testing this script, I'm just going to add in some additional pause commands. So this will pause the script and it'll just allow me to see what's going on. In most cases, you shouldn't need to bother with these pauses. Okay, so let's save it to desktop as update.bat and I'm just going to go ahead and open this in Notepad++. And now that it's open, you'll see that it's color coded. So let me just check that everything's okay and it seems to be. So I'm going to right click the script and select run as administrator. So now it will tell me some details about the boot.wim and the install.wim. And then it's going to create a folder called boot. It'll extract the boot.wim to it. It'll add the drivers to this. It'll commit the changes. Then delete this folder. Then create a folder called home basic. And it'll extract the home basic from the install.wim to this folder. It will slipstream all the updates, slipstream the drivers, then commit to changes, and then follow on for Home Premium, Professional, and Ultimate. And I've put the multiple pauses in this just simply so I can see if there are any errors. And there's no errors, so the script's working exactly as expected. Okay, so if you haven't added in the additional pauses, you'll probably be at this bit where it just gives you an update about the boot.wim and install.wim, and then you just press any key to continue. Now, I'm going to go into Win7 and then Sources, and delete a file called ei.cfg. For a retail ISO, an EI.cfg file will essentially automatically select an edition and removal of this file will allow you to select the edition you want during the Windows 7 installation. Now if you're using the Dell Windows 7 reinstallation ISO, you'll not want to delete the EI.cfg file. Instead you should edit this and one other file and I'll leave written instructions on doing this. Editing these two files will maintain the OEM system lock pre-installation when you switch the edition. Okay, so finally, what we want to do is create the bootable ISO. And I'm probably going to combine these two scripts together in the written instructions. So basically you would just need to create a blank folder on C called ISO. And it would be done together in one script. However, in this test case, 
the two scripts are separate. So let's just launch the second script and it's going to create the ISO for me. Okay, so let's just test this ISO. Let's copy it to the Windows 10 desktop and then we're going to use VMware to create a new virtual machine. So I'll skip through this very quickly because it's not the main point of this video. But we're going to create a new virtual machine and we're going to add USB 3 ports to it. By default VMware only has USB 2.0 support for Windows 7 simply because most Windows 7 installation media doesn't have the drivers. Okay, so if we just very quickly go through the Windows 7 virtual machine installed with this ISO, we can see that we can boot to this ISO, so it's a good sign so far. Now unfortunately I can't get the date to change on the screen, so this screen shows because we deleted the ei.cfg file and I just selected Home Basic just to test this edition in this case. Okay, so finally after the install we're on the Windows 7 Virtual Machines desktop and already we can see Internet Explorer 11's pre-installed and we can have a look at the installed updates.